Hi and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day today. This video is going to be a continuation going along with the whole tombstones, headstones thing. Figured since I made those suckers up, I might as well have some fun and make up some different style graves. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do an open grave, uh, skeletons coming out of the grave, as well as just newly covered graves and some dirt piles, because I figured, why not? That's what you're going to find in a cemetery anyways, right? So take a look. Any questions you can always ask me down below or reach out to me at my email address, thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you do. And if you haven't hit the little bell, that's a good idea too, since that's going to notify you when I put up my most recent video. I hope you're having a lot of fun with these projects. I know I am. And then keep in mind on Mischief Night or what is it, Cabbage Night or something like that, I am going to be doing a live stream to show you how all of these pieces fit and work together, as well as incorporate a few of the things that I have made in the past. So it's going to be a pretty fun live stream. I'm going to show you how everything kind of functions with each other. And I'm looking forward to doing it. So anyways, take a look. As always, thank you for watching. Enjoy, and I'll see you later. Bye. Before getting into the thick of it, I wanted to show you the different looks that you're going to be able to achieve after you've finished watching this tutorial. This is the skeletons coming out of the graves, and next to that one I've also placed basically a freshly covered grave where there's some new grass starting to grow over it. And next to that I also have the open grave and basically a pile of dirt. So these are the types of graves that I'm going to show you how to make. They're completely modular. You can move them around and place them next to each other however you want to. And it really gives you a cool effect in the long run. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is take your Dollar Tree foam board and cut it into one inch strips. The length can vary depending on what you're comfortable working with. After that, what I did was cut those one inch strips into shorter lengths of about an inch and a half up to two inches, varying the size a little bit because not all graves are going to be the same size anyways. But that's how I got things started first with prepping the foam. After that, what you're going to do is start beveling the edges of the foam for everything but the open grave forms that you want to do. So bevel your edges, uh, you can use your X-Acto knife for this, and then you can also smooth things down a little bit with a metal nail file when you're done. But as you can see at this point here, one is with the beveled edge, the other is not. Again, for the open graves, do not bevel those edges. When it comes to the dirt piles and the sections for the skeletons, you do want to add a second layer. So you're using a smaller piece of foam, beveling the edges on that, and then you're going to place it on top of the larger pieces of foam with some hot glue, secure the two together, and then that way it'll be something where you can take your X-Acto knife again and go through and bevel everything down so it runs into each other and smooths out a little bit more, but it'll give you more of a piled look as opposed to stacked look with your pieces of foam. It becomes more of one cohesive unit as opposed to two separate pieces put together. Once everything's beveled, you're going to take your metal nail file and go around and buff out any rough ridges or sharp edges to give it a more smooth, rounded look. So once you get everything beveled and smoothed out, you can then take your skeletons that I had left over from Dollar General and start cutting out the pieces that you want. I took some skulls, I took some arm joints, as well as arms holding different weapons to kind of get the sense that these are crawling out from the grave ready for battle. I even took one and just took a simple closed fist and have it sticking out of the top so it looks like one of them's about to emerge from the grave itself. But just carefully go around, snip out what you want, push it into the foam in the position you want them to be, and that way it preps it for you so you can see where these skeletons are going to go once you start getting things ready. So this is what I did with all the pieces for the skeletons. And as you can see, it's pretty basic once you figure out what it is you're going to do with them. The next step after that is to start hot gluing these with your low temp hot glue gun into the pieces of foam. And what I did for a little additional visual interest is take some of that hot glue and layer it up around, around the skeletons to make it look like piles of dirt on top of it and rolling down the hill or the slope of the grave. So that's a little bit more you can do to give it some more interest to the appearance. Thank you. 
At this point, it's important to start gluing these onto pieces of cardboard. I chose to go with cereal box cardboard. Take your hot glue gun, spread it around the base of the piece, and then as you're putting it onto the cardboard, I find it helps to wiggle it around a little bit to make sure it's spread out and definitely secured to that cardboard. Then what you want to do is take your glue gun and go around the edges between the foam and the cardboard to blend them into each other a little bit better. I find it helps to run these around and you can also take your fingers once the glue has cooled enough and sort of push it against the foam and the cardboard at the same time to get into that ridge between the two again to smooth this out and then you want to let it cool completely before the next step. With your knife, what you want to do is carefully go around and cut out these pieces away from the cardboard. You can round out the edges, you can extend it just a little bit. You just want to make sure that the hot glue is still a part of what you are cutting off so that it has a smoothed off edge to it. For the open grave, I took the tip of my metal nail file and I started drawing lines from the corners down toward the center, but not all the way into the center. You stop about midway through. So you want to make sure you do this to each corner, and you're basically making a 45 degree angle between all the corners. Once you've done that, you're going to go through and draw a rectangle to attach all those lines together. So really you're creating your force perspective at this point. It's almost like having a picture frame. So you can see how you have the rectangle of the open grave foam and then the rectangle inside the foam. Then what I did is took the tip of my file and I just went into that smaller rectangle and pushed in at the foam and poked it and prodded it to give it sort of a lumpy, dirt-like appearance as a texture because that's going to be the bottom of the grave. And this is something you can do with a pencil too or another similar sharp object. I just find that the nail file gives me the grooves without damaging the foam. So as you can see there, it has that lumpy texture to it. The next thing you want to do is take it and draw narrow lines across each section, again to create a force perspective. Uh, they don't have to be deep lines, you just want to create a texture to the foam. So as you can see, I'm just kind of gliding the nail file across on its edge to create these lines, and you make sure to do it to each side, and that's going to give you a sense of an edge that goes down into a deeper bottom. At this point, you're going to add softer edges to all these pieces by using your hot glue gun. The trick here is to take a flat bottom plate or a smooth glass surface, take a little bit of aquaphor and rub it on to that surface because that's going to help the hot glue release a lot easier than anything else. Then what you need to do with your glue gun is take your glue gun and go around the edges of these pieces to give it that sense of dirt piling up on the edge of the open grave in this case, or just the dirt sort of falling off to the sides with the other grave forms that we have in this grouping. And it helps to make sure to kind of pick up the glue gun a little bit, give it some of that bumps and lumps to it, because again, this is going to translate more into bumps and lumps and stones underneath the dirt as opposed to a completely smooth and flat surface and this will give you a sense of how you want the hot glue to look around the open grave. When it comes to edging the other pieces, especially the covered graves and the dirt piles, you don't want there to be as strong of an edge of hot glue like there is for the open grave. In this case, what you want to do is still do the texturing around the edges and having it look like the dirt is overflowing, but what you're going to do is go back and take your hot glue gun and start smoothing it around and up onto the foam itself so that there's a more even blending from the foam into the glue so they're not two separate entities, and this will give you a more definite look of a dirt pile or a closed off grave as opposed to the open grave with the edges of dirt around it. Once the glue has cooled, literally all you need to do is just pop a fingernail underneath the edge of some glue and lift the piece up and off the plate. And at this point you can also take off any threads or strands of leftover hot glue that have cooled as well. 
what you want to do now is take just some simple white glue and go around the edges where you want to have the dirt to go or cover the entire piece with the glue. In this case for the open grave, just put it on the edges where the hot glue is. For the graves that are covered and everything like that, well then everything gets covered with glue. So go around and make sure your glue is in every nook and cranny that you want to have covered with sand. And then what I did is I just used sand that I found at Dollar Tree and I poured it over these pieces and made sure they were completely covered well to get the sand texture onto the pieces, which would then translate into a dirt-like look. For the pieces with the skeletons, obviously you do not put the glue on the skeletons, instead just around the area around them, and then you'll put the sand on top of them after that. And again, you want to make sure everything is completely dry before moving on. When the white glue is completely dry, you'll then take out the pieces, shake off any excess sand. And it is at this point that you can also take some gravel, like fish tank gravel, and add it onto these pieces here and there to give nod to larger bits of stone on the pieces as opposed to just one solid piece of sand. And once those pieces have dried, you can then go and coat everything with a mixture of part Mod Podge, part black paint, part dark brown paint, which is a mix I like to use. Equal parts of everything and make sure you put on a good thick coat so that everything will stay in place. For visual reference, here's everything I had painted up with that coating and once it was dry, it takes on this particular appearance. Now let's get started with painting on the details. So here is a photograph of all the paints I used for just the dirt layer colors. And in this case, you are going to be putting these colors on with a stencil brush because you're going to be stippling. So first you start with the gray, then you move on to the chocolate brown. After the chocolate brown, you take it to an orange. Yes, that bright orange color, it's actually gonna give the dirt a more clay-like appearance. Once the orange is on there, you'll move on to doing the medium brown. And finally, what you wanna do is let these all dry and then you can go back with that stencil brush and do the light brown as the last layer of dirt paint color. And what you'll also notice is that the skeletons themselves, I did allow some of the paint to get on them because basically they're crawling out of the dirt, they're going to pick up those colors. So in this case, yes, it is okay to get these paint colors onto the skeletons. We are going to detail them next. For the open graves, to get the inside effect going on, what I used was a black paint and a brown paint. And what you do first is put that black paint in the very bottom of the grave where that small rectangle is, and you paint that up just purely black, no other color. Then what you're gonna do is take some of that black and around the edge sides is bring it up about a third of the way of the space that you have to work with. Then what happens is you're gonna take the brown from the edge of where the dirt starts and go down back into the grave, and you're going to blend your black and your brown together to get a gradient coloration going from the top down into the bottom of the grave. So you'll get something that ends up looking like this. Next we're moving on to adding the grass look to these pieces by putting on green. And again, it's these three colors of paint that I used along with a stencil brush. Keep in mind, the more green you use, the more covered with quote unquote grass it is going to be. So for the dirt piles, you can opt to put just a little bit around the edges. For the more covered graves, obviously cover it more with the greens to get the desired effect that you want. Play around with it, see how it's looking. You can always add a little bit more. Don't go too crazy in the beginning though because it's harder to take it away. But it's basically the same idea as I did in the tombstones video where you go through and use that stencil brush to stipple on the colors as you want. Keep in mind though, do not put these on the skeletons, all right? You don't want green skeletons in this case. For the stones and for the skeletons, these are the two colors I used, starting first with the gray. I went with the stones, I just put a coating of the gray around, all, not all of them, just some of them. And then once that dried, I went back and I put the lighter parchment color onto the stones. Same concept with the skeletons, I brushed the dry brush the gray onto the skeletons, let them dry, and then I went back over and did some of the parchment just to highlight the features of the skeletons themselves. So that's how I got these set up with the skeletons and the stones.
The last leg of this project involved sealing these pieces as well as adding just a little bit of hair to some of the skeletons. The hair on the skeletons was just some extra cheesecloth I had left over that had been dyed gray. I cut a few strands out of it, pulled it apart, and as I was putting a seal of Mod Podge onto all these pieces, when I got to the heads of these skeletons, I put on a dollop of the Mod Podge, put the cheesecloth strands onto that, and then just kind of used my paintbrush to make sure it was adhering onto the skeleton's head. So that's really how the hair got onto the skeletons. Very simple, very easy. Now make sure once you have this coat of matte Mod Podge on these pieces that you allow it to dry completely before you do anything with them because you don't want to affect the paint job either on the skeletons or on the pieces themselves. And there you have it. You have all of your graves done. Don't forget you get to see these in action on Mischief Night on the live stream. I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. It's channel time! Who wants to take bets how long before a cattail is behind me? <laughs> There's one behind the screen, you might get a shadow. Alright. For seriousness. For serious. For seriousness. As little girl likes to say, for seriousness. Fun little behind the scenes how I film the intros. I'm literally kneeling on my living room floor. We have this room divider, and behind it I have this really cool light right there. It just spins around and it makes these awesome patterns on the back of the screen, so yeah, that's my studio. It's so basic, but it works. Tell me that's not flippin' hypnotic. That's looking really good today. I need to do these more on rainy days.